Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of the City Confessions. I am joined by Kate Kerner. She is a New York City influencer and the founder and owner of Kate Communications Group. I also know you're based in Brooklyn. So am I. So Brooklyn represent. (laughs) And I know it's your first podcast, so I'm so excited and welcome. You're like ripping the bandaid off. (laughs) Yes. I love it. I love it. I grew up in theater, so this is perfect. This is perfect for for awesome. And I know before we recorded, you were like, you are a very chilled, go with the flow type of girl. And I'm like, "Mm, me too. So it's funny. I'm usually very, so I'm very type A in certain Mm, elements. Yes. Very focused, very organized. But sometimes I just love like the, like in this situation, it's like go with the flow, say how you feel, talk about whatever it might be. Right. So Mm -hmm. love this. super excited to get started. Yes. Okay. So why don't you introduce yourself to what my listeners Tell us who you are, what you do, and your relationship to New York City, since this is called the City Confessions. I love it. So first and foremost, I am from Arizona, actually. So Mm -hmm. I was sort of late to the New York game, but my family, um, my mom and my dad were both born in New York um, and then moved to Arizona when they had me. So I am Arizona, born and raised, (laughs) New York blood. So (laughs) yeah part of my relationship to New York um if you you know say it like mm-hmm. that I think and I'm how just, long yeah New York, my, New York is in my heart so mm-hmm. I be, um, I graduated um, from Penn State in 2016 and then moved here to the Upper West Side and then to the mm-hmm. Upper East Side and now I'm in Brooklyn I don't think I'll ever move away from Brooklyn I love it so much so um I'm getting married here actually oh. in Brooklyn I'm really excited about that. Oh my God, congrats. Wait, what venue? The Liberty Warehouse. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's perfect. It's in Red Hook, so it's really, really mm-hmm. lovely. Um, yeah. Well, let's see, I'm 27 years old, turning 28 in July. Um, I am a content creator. I, you know, that's like, I do it for fun. I mm-hmm. love just like posting what I'm eating, where I'm working out, what I'm buying, things like that. It's fun to just, post about my life and have fun with it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And also I am the founder, like you mentioned, of my own business, um, Kate Communications Group. So I do marketing and social media and sales um, all within my business. So my business started during COVID. Um, I used to be a trainer at Box and Flow, which is a a boxing yoga hybrid Mm -hmm. studio in New York, in NoHo. and I used to handle their partnerships, events, social media, you name it, did it. Um, and unfortunately, the, the studio closed in COVID and I really wanted to keep doing what I was doing, but also I keep wanting to, help, like, I wanted to help more businesses, right? So I said, why not start my own business? And um, it takes a lot of work, uh, a lot of a lot of time management, um, a lot of patience, but I, I love what I do. I help um, a few different businesses in the health and wellness space. And um, I love it every day and, and I wouldn't change it. So running my own business is, is definitely um, a huge part of who I am. That's uh, amazing. So I know that a lot of people had to either pivot or had to just have different, I guess, career um, paths, especially during COVID. And with you, you obviously created your business. So did you always have this entrepreneurial mindset? Like you knew you were going to start something of your own? Yeah, yeah. Um, I always wanted to do it. I think it was just a matter of when. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it came about very organically. Um, Mm -hmm. I used to be in like the corporate New York City world. So working from nine to five in an office, I worked at Bloomberg Media and then a um, software sales company as well in the financial um, industry. And Mm -hmm. I just am not a type of person to sit down at a desk from nine to five. So taking lunch breaks and going to the bathroom Mm -hmm. and getting coffee and keeping myself busy was something that I always did. And I just knew that I I wanted to be busy at every moment of the day and I couldn't sit still. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, That wasn't the life for me. So having my, I feel you. It's great. Um, Yeah. I'm like always active. I'm basically like an energizer bunny. So sitting (laughs) not very easy for me um and uh yeah I mean I loved I mean I loved being in the fitness industry 
when I was in the financial industry. Like I just loved, I loved working out. I loved being a part of the wellness industry and meeting like-minded people. So I knew that for me, it was, it was right. I wanted to have to have my own business, but I also wanted to navigate into the fitness and, and wellness um, mm-hmm. space. As well. Yeah. And I, I love hearing that, but I know that starting your own business comes with challenges and that's something that we don't really talk about or highlight. So what has been the biggest obstacle thus far since starting your own business? Yeah, I mean, I think it's balancing multiple clients at once. Um, I think it's, it's, it's sometimes, you know, you're, you're the only person in charge, right? So Mm -hmm. different clients coming to you with, with different tasks and different needs all at once. And it's really a sense of like, how can I balance this, right? Like, what are the priorities and how can I um, you know, create a better time management structure for myself in order to, you know, help all of these clients at once, because every client is treated equal in my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm giving my all and giving my best work at all times. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's definitely a struggle, but, but also my organization has helped with that because I really like, I have a, I have a notebook. I write down everything I need to do for the day of a calendar, like, setting those, those, um, you know, those goals and that, and mm-hmm. that those tasks has helped me with that. Um, that's definitely a, a big challenge. Um, you know, being, being really the only girl in charge. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I have, I have teams, which is great. Like some of my clients I'll okay. work with. Um, so that's been a really great opportunity for me. So it's, it's like being, you know, on a full-time job, but within your own company. If yeah, it's like almost like agency life when you uh, represent different um, clients and companies and you're like a mind reader because my next question was going to be, are you doing this by yourself? So it sounds like you are, but you do have the support from these specific clients that you're working with, correct? Yes. Um, so here's the thing. I one day want to have a company where I have like maybe 10 people on my team. Mm-hmm. I eventually want to get there. I know now is not that the right time um, because I do want to handle this myself right now. I'm confident mm-hmm. in my abilities, but I, I know that there are people out there who I want to work with and who, who, who also want to work with me. And I know that one day it'll happen and I'll have a team. And, and that's something that I'm really excited about because um, I really like being a manager as well. And, and um, mm-hmm. I, think I am, I think I am good at that. Um, I know how to manage people and, um, and part of that is also being a good listener too. So, mm-hmm. okay. So tell me how you go about finding your clients. Has it been through social media, word of mouth, your own network? I'm just yeah. so curious to know. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a matter of both, right. Um, mm-hmm. promoting myself and my business on social media, but also word of mouth. So, um, you know, my clients have referred me to other clients, for example, but I also, I'm basically everywhere in New York City. Like people always say, like you are everywhere, Kate. Like you are here, you're there, you're there, you're there. And like it's just that a matter of me putting myself out there and mm-hmm. saying, like, hey, I'm Kate. But like at the end of the day, you know, if a relationship is formed and it's not me, it's not me gaining a client, mm-hmm. that's that's great. Like mm-hmm. it's a matter of building relationships. So I think that relationships and and um meeting people have led me to, to finding my clients, but also just like gaining a network and gaining a, mm-hmm. a community. Um, Cause Ooh. you never know. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's the, that's the thing here. Like I never know when I'll need somebody by my side and, and forming these relationships now will help me find that person to be like my, like person <laughs> who I can ha- have, who helps me with these clients and, um, I think that's the beauty of, of meeting people is just like, you never know when you'll need someone's help. Mm, I'm just like nodding my head and just like agreeing it. because I'm like, I think that's what New York is great for, like networking and not in a selfish way, not in a very like ulterior motive way, but for like the beautiful benefits of networking where it's a give and take and it's not just, you know, it's, it's mutual. And, and um, I met you like through somebody that yes. I know and and that's like it's so appreciative of I'm so appreciative of that person who put us mm-hmm. in touch because it's like that person wants to help both of us exactly they're doing it for themselves they're doing mm-hmm. it because they need help. and like for me I'm always that kind of person who's like all right how can I help my friend yeah. or like it's not it's not about like how can they help me it's how can I help them mm-hmm. 
but like how can we help each other I think that's mm-hmm. when your picture comes in right yes oh my god I don't know like when you were speaking that I was like I I truly believe people come into your life for a reason even if it's for an hour <laughs> right like in a passing I'm sure like I've had con- mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I've had conversations um with people like on the plane I'm never gonna see them again or I think I'm never gonna see them again yeah, yeah and it's like I'm like oh my god I like yeah. I don't know what this is but we just have this like synergy this amazing connection but then we go our merry way and I mean some people I keep in touch with some I don't and that's just like the beautiful parts and I always say that people think your past stays in the past and of course there are certain elements that do but you'd be so surprised how many people come back and I don't know about you but no, recently yes recently like there were like three people within in the same day that like popped up reconnected with me and when I say past I mean like 10 years five years and I'm like what is happening but there's a reason why right like we probably didn't we probably had like unsettled business or whatever the case is and it's, yeah totally, totally I mean that's yeah like one of my friends from high school, like I went to high school in Arizona and I see people sometimes in New York and I'm like, this is bizarre. Um, but it's really cool. I think that's also like a really cool part of life. This is like, not, it's not really the same tangent here, but like, mm-hmm. it's really cool watching people develop and like grow. I think that's a really interesting part of like my business too. It's really cool watching like my clients grow and like watching myself grow. I've grown mm-hmm. so much. Um, so yeah yeah no I love that what has been the biggest like lesson you've learned either from your clients or from yourself um the biggest lesson is definitely having patience (laughs) Mm. um I'm sometimes really like I'm not very I'm good at having patience but sometimes Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit stubborn and will be like I need this to be done like tomorrow or and it's that glow it's that go with the flow energy and that patience Mm -hmm really important to have um because things get don't get done overnight it's like mm-hmm. building is going to get done overnight right um so I think like having patience is a huge lesson and, and just kind of being able to take a step back and saying like okay things will happen and it might not happen now but like I need to be understanding of the fact that like time is is of the essence and like things will get done when they're going to get done mm-hmm. it's just a big lesson that I learned. yeah do you consider yourself like type A and perfectionist though? Yeah, I do. Okay, because I do too, but my biggest flaw is probably um, being a control freak. Oh. Like I, yeah, so how the hell do you manage that? Because I feel like with clients, there's a really slippery slope with be understanding, but yet being like, this is my business. And like, I don't know. I just find that so hard to navigate. I know. And it's like a big, definitely a big challenge. Um, And it's being, it's kind of coming to the reasoning, like some things are out of my control. Mm. Like Mm -hmm. what can I do to control my feelings or my thoughts in this moment? But like some external factors are, are out of your control. Like how you react to a client is in your control. Mm -hmm. Right. Like how you react to like meeting somebody on the street and them yelling at you for no reason or like, maybe they're having a bad day and they're just taking it out on you. Like, how do you react to that? Do you say like, mm-hmm. oh, let me hold on for a second. Like, let me think about that. Be like, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe right. it's, it's them being frustrated with their own, whatever it might be that day. Like, it's not me. <laughs> I'm like, let mm-hmm. me take it back. Mm-hmm. So I just think like realizing things are out of your control is sometimes really important, but you are in control of how you react to certain situations. Yes, so much, yes. And I know that you have a health wellness background and I know one thing that I personally learned is like the power of your breath because we breathe all the time but we don't realize (laughs) you I don't know if you've been to mind body project yet but they're one of my clients I'm always so here's the deal like my clients are are people or or places or things or businesses whatever it might be that I admire and that Mm -hmm. I genuinely a connection to like mm-hmm. my body project is so much of what you're saying right now it's learning mm-hmm. how to understand and control your breath 
And it's, it's literally like, it's unreal. I went this morning. Um, if you're having anxiety, if you're having a bad day, if you just want to like get yourself on the right track, mm-hmm. I start my day with, with class. Um, and I feel like you would love it. So I'm excited mm-hmm. for us to go together. Yeah. It sounds five, awesome. Five minute meditation, mm-hmm. 20 minute hit workout with TRX and then five minute meditation. And you are controlling your breath the entire time and using your breath the entire time. So like, Oh my God. Yeah. A big part of this conversation right now that you and I are having, and it like really just expands outside of this conversation. Like being able to understand your breath is so important. And like in that reaction phase, it's like, let me take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out and see like what happens. So. Oh my God. I mean, again, we've never met for those listening or watching. Yeah, and it's, we have. I just like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. No, but I love it because you don't really know me as well. And, and and I actually really value wellness. I'm always like, I prioritize like working out. I work out every single day. I meditate every morning. Oh. It's so, so, so important to me. And the class that you are mentioning is perfect because I'm very much a hit girl. Like I need to be like actively, you know, moving, but like really quick in and out, but to, to also incorporate meditation and breath work sounds very contrary to what hit is so I think that's interesting that's also like part like when I worked at Fox and Flow it was like Mm. it's it's it helps it helps me as a person Mm -hmm. because it helps me it just helps me understand my body and my mind Mm -hmm. I think you'd love it so we're gonna go no absolutely (laughs) no we have to do it for sure Okay, so my podcast is called The City Confessions, and basically after I invite guests to come on to just chit-chat, you know, it's like a little warm-up, I love to ask if you can share a city confession, and I say this every single time, but there's no right or wrong, no good or bad, it's just like a fun common theme for all of my episodes, and it can be something you know, a little deeper and personal or just on the surface level and silly. So it's however you receive the question, Kate. So if you can share a confession, what would that be? I guess this is sort of a confession. I mean, I am such a sweet tooth. It's like a big, Mm. that like I will stop wherever I am to get like a piece of chocolate or like something sweet. What's your favorite tree? Well, okay. So I have a few different ones. Um, Okay, tell me. (laughs) So the little cupcake bake shop is so good. I love their like yes on Prince Street. I'm like not vegan, but I do I do try to have like vegan desserts and to eliminate the dairy and whatever mm-hmm. it might be. So like I love getting their cupcakes sometimes when I'm just like out and about. But um Levain Bakery, like their gluten-free cookie, so good. Chef's kiss. Um, but yeah, I just like love finding sweets. I think it's <laughs> but also like I like finding this in life. I, I mean, I yeah. hope that was the confession question. I like, there are, so, I don't know. So it's, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a peanut butter addict. <laughs> Me too. Yes, I love it. No, it's awesome because I think are you um, the best part about being in New York or one of the best parts are all the like endless options of dining. And there was one time when I was like looking at even just Manhattan in general. And I grew up in the Lower East Side. And I was like, okay, I'm on a mission to check off every single restaurant and brunch spot. And that's like, obviously impossible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's like, that's the beauty of it. I like, I, I'm such a brunch girl every single weekend. What is, what is <laughs> Wait, and that's so hard because I have a few. But okay. it depends what the mood is. Like if it's for pancakes, I love Clinton Street Bakery. If it's for like eggs or like something healthy, I like dimes. Oh, I've uh, ever, have I, been there? I want to go. That one's good. Um, there's just so many. I love Reunion in Williams, Williamsburg Greenpoint. It's like literally down the block for me right now. Okay, on my list. What are yours? So two hands. Yeah, I was just, I was going there yesterday. I went yesterday. There yesterday. No, but the line was like two hours and I said no. Which one did you go to? The one in Olisa. You can make a reservation there, by the way. Do you know that? I know, but it was like a last minute thing. And I went in and there was so many empty seats. And I was like, can I just come? And they're like, yeah, sorry. And I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah, my favorite thing there is the Zoe's breakfast plate or bowl. I forgot. It's what, plate or bowl. So yeah. good. And I had, um, smoked salmon to it. Yum. Yeah. Um, lunch is 
like I'm such a brunch girl. Um, wait, That's what we you- need to do as well. We'll 100%. we'll take the class and then we'll go to brunch. We'll go to brunch. Um, also, also Westville kale salad is my favorite. Mm, um, yes. So cheese, not blue cheese. Add salmon. It's like a thing. Um, and wait, were you crunchy peanut butter or or um smooth? I'm smooth. I feel like you're crunchy. Damn. <laughs> but it's fine. Peanut butter is peanut butter. It is. You know what I mean? My other favorite. <laughs> My other favorite thing. Oh my God. I love how we're just like going on a freaking food rant. I love it. Okay. So also as we're like closing down, I love to have this like quick fire round of New York Ooh. questions, even though I feel like we somewhat tackle that. So I'll ask five questions and the first answer or word that comes up is what you'll obviously say. <laughs> I love okay. If you can describe New York City in one word, what would it be? Romantic. Oh my God, I've never heard that. I love that. What is your favorite thing about New York? Well, romantic again. The lights. <laughs> I was like, can I say romantic again? <laughs> no, it's the city lights for sure. Mm-hmm. And what is the worst thing? Ugh, people that can't walk in a straight line. <laughs> well, people or- who stop on the sidewalk. And I'm like, come on, let's go. What are you doing? Like, what are you or doing? people who take up the whole sidewalk. And I'm like, yeah, well, or the whole subway seat. I'm like, can you should- <laughs> Can we share here? <laughs> yes. Um, what was your favorite restaurant? I mean, that's what I'm saying. We kind of touched upon this, but so we kind of touched on it. But I oh god, I have so many, but um, I do love 12 chairs. I think that's like my oh my favorite. god, yes. I'm a hummus girl. I'm I'm like I could eat Mediterranean, that kind of food, like Israeli food all the time. So I think we're gonna go with 12 chairs or Westville. Mm-hmm. Yes, love both of them. If you love hummus, have you been to Miss Ada? I think it's a Fort Green. It's so good, right? <laughs> it's amazing. They had a really good salad there, and I forgot the name of it, but it was delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll have to find it, but yeah. <laughs> and then I think this is the last one. This is the fifth one. Um, if you can thank New York City for one thing, what would it be? My dog. <laughs> oh, you got your dog here? Yes. Oh my god, I love that. Did you yeah. have a dog growing up or no? I did. I did. Okay. Okay, because like I don't have a dog, obviously, and I don't like. Aww. I've never grown up with that, but I feel like it's like a city thing. Like it's not as common, you know. I just, it's really nice to have a dog. Like mm-hmm. when my fiance is not home and I come home to my dog, it's nice. Like or when he goes out and I'm home. Mm-hmm. I when know I just, people always tell me that. Like, yeah, <laughs> I know they're like. I mean, I love like dogs like my aunt has a dog my best friends have dogs but like I'm always like it's good to like pet them and be around them but like for me to like have my own I mean that's a lot but they're always like you you just have to get one to understand what it's like so I'm like "Mm." yeah okay so um now that again we're closing out it's your chance to plug away for those watching and listening I'm going to have all of Kate's information in the show notes and the description but Kate, are you working on anything that's a secret? What can the world yeah. be on the lookout from you? Yeah, two secrets. Yes. Tell us. But it's hopefully gonna come out like spring time. Okay, so that's all we get. But you know what? I love that because we need to get people thinking, you know, so they have to follow you to figure it out. Um, but yeah, and then I guess one more closing question that I sometimes forget to ask my guests, but I feel like it's appropriate with you is um, what is the one thing you love most about yourself? Because we have to end on a high note. Well, this will help then. My energy. Mm -hmm. I will always bring positive energy and fun to any situation. Like I'm that girl in the fitness class who was like screaming. (laughs) I'm the woo girl, but... I think bringing positive energy is something that um, that is something that I love about myself. I, it really affects others around me. Um, mm-hmm. The same no. way. So. Yeah, no, I think that's really beautiful because I think energy is really, really contagious. And it's one of those things where you can't really, like you could work on, but it's either almost, it comes from within, right? And I think it's it's very telling and like, of your soul and you can tell somebody's really genuine authentic and I can personally tell that you are so I also just want to take a moment now to just send you my gratitude for saying yes 
to be in my <laughs> podcast. No, but seriously, I I feel like you and I we we connect in that wavelength of almost like spirituality. So it's okay for me to say it because you'll understand it. But I do believe when people say yes, it's not just one thing that I'm like, okay, great, let me record this podcast. It's like I'm present with you. I know you've been present with me. And these like past thirty minutes, we're not gonna get back. But it was such a beautiful way to spend it with you. I agree. So, thank you. I could do this all night. I know. I know. That's why. Because that's the thing. Like chit chatting is so fun. It's mm-hmm. so fun. I can talk for hours. Um, I really, I really. No, we will do it in person for sure. I would love that. I would okay. Love that. Well, for those, yes, for those listening and watching, thank you again so much. Um, stay tuned for next week's episode and make sure to follow Kate on all her platforms. All right. Bye. Bye everybody.